Hello, this is Vic. Welcome to my channel and thank you for viewing my videos today. I'm in the beautiful and fascinating country of Turkey and I'm visiting Turkey's third largest city, the very historic city of Izmir, Smyrna or Smyrni. In this particular documentary, for the next three days, we're going to walk around this fascinating and beautiful city. We're going to visit the most historic and important sites. We have so much to see, so much to learn. This is Vec. Let's go for a long walk. Let's do it. Okay, let's uh, start our tour of this very, very historic city here in Turkey. Izmir, incidentally, is the third largest city of Turkey after Istanbul and Ankara. And I'm at the central square, I'm at Konak Square. And here you see Saad Kulesi, the clock tower, a very iconic structure. This is the trademark of the city. If you see any photographs or videos, without a doubt, you're going to see this beautiful clock tower, which was built in 1901 to celebrate the 25th year on the throne of the then of the then Sultan. Ottoman Sultan. It's a beautiful structure indeed and this is where life revolves around here in Izmir. You can see how beautiful it is and people stop here throughout the day because the fountains work here beautifully and they have worked since 1901. Now we're going to walk around and we're going to visit or briefly view that small mosque that you see there. That's the Konak Mosque, which is absolutely beautiful, built in 1748. It's very small, but absolutely spectacular given its architecture with beautiful Ottoman blue tiles outside. So if you come to Izmir, without a doubt, you're going to come to Konak Square quite a few times. You're going to see the clock tower several times. And then you're going to walk around the clock tower and come here to view this beautiful mosque. Another thing you're going to notice in Izmir, just like every other Turkish city, village, or town, there are a lot of Turkish flags all over. Here's another last view of this beautiful mosque built in 1748. Look at the blue tiles here. Let's continue our walk around this very historic city here on a beautiful afternoon. Come on. And uh, here's a view of the beautiful fountains here at Konak Square. You can see the clock tower that we just saw down there. And between the clock tower, the square, and the waterfront, you will find these magnificent fountains here. Now right behind me there's a bunch of uh, kids that you can hear screaming. And they're actually swimming in the fountains. Okay, here's the mosque, Konak Mosque, that we just saw. And at the other end of the square, if I was to turn around, we find a very beautiful building, very historic. It seems to have been built around the, the beginning of the 20th century. This is the place of the governor of the area of Izmir. This is not the city hall. This is not the mayor's place. This is the governor's place. Beautiful architecture as you can see, and you can see the Turkish flag 
and there's a huge banner here with a picture of Mustafa Kemal Ataturk or Ataturk on the left, the Turkish flag, and then a picture of the current president of Turkey and the prime minister. Beautiful building indeed. And this building was here during the catastrophe of 1922. And thankfully was not burned down like 75% of the city was burned in September of 1922. Let's continue our walk around this beautiful city. Now, as uh, we tour the beautiful city of Izmir, we need to keep in mind this is a very historic city and it has been occupied for thousands of years. I have a brochure here that you can see from the Tourist Information Center, which is right in front of me actually here at the Clock Tower Square, that uh, tells us that Izmir was occupied since 4,000 years before Christ. Now the Greeks have been here since about 2,000 years before Christ and they were here for 4,000 years until 1922. The problem with this brochure that unfortunately has been given to thousands of tourists when they visit this beautiful uh, city does not mention the Greeks at all. It is to the, Greek, to the Turks as if the Greeks never existed. So let me read to you what this brochure says about the peoples that lived here over the last 8,000 years. So here you go. The people that lived here have been the Amazons, Lydians, Persians, Alexander the Great and, and his generals, Romans, Arabs, Byzantines, and then the Selj Seljuk and the Ottoman Turks. It is to the Turks, according to this brochure and according to all the brochures, as if the Greeks never really existed. So according to this brochure, my dear friends, I'm an Amazon. I'm not a Greek, although I was born in Greece, according to the Turks. The Greeks never came here, and the people that lived here before the Persians were the Amazons. So this was a very highly rewarding trip for me, because now I found out on top of everything else I know about my descendants, that I'm also an Amazon, or a descendant of the Amazons. Absolutely amazing. It took me a trip to Turkey to find out that the Greeks never existed, and that I'm a descendant of the Amazons. Let's continue our tour. And this brochure goes in the rubbish. Okay, I'm now about uh, 600 meters east from the waterfront here in Izmir. And here we find two museums, the most important museums of the city. This is the archaeological museum that you see there. It will cost you two dollars to go in and right next to it there is a huge beautiful building with a tower that can be seen from the waterfront right there and this is the ethnological museum of Izmir this one is for free so we're going to go inside both here's another view of the ethnological museum Let's go inside both of the museums and let's check them out and uh, you will decide which one is the best one for you to visit in case you do make it to this beautiful city here in Turkey. And uh, here is a view of the ethnological museum here in Izmir which is right next to the Archaeological Museum. So if you have time, by all means, come here, walk through. You will enjoy the exhibits. You're going to learn quite a bit about Ottoman life here in Izmir. The And uh, here's a very quick view 
inside one of the wings of the archaeological museum here in Izmir. In this particular wing you will find a lot of statues from the Hellenistic time and also from the Roman times as well. So these statues would range from the fourth century before Christ up to the the third century after Christ. There are also other wings, especially upstairs, you will find a very substantial exhibit of Greek vases and pottery and an incredible exhibit of jewelry from ancient Greece and also of coins from the Byzantine times. I am now in the center of the city and I'm visiting Kultur Parki, a huge park area of roughly about a square kilometer in size with beautiful green spaces, fountains, a zoo, a TV tower, a theater and a convention center beautifully landscaped all around. So if you have time when you visit Izmir and you would like to walk around and to enjoy some peace and quiet from the noise and the traffic of the city, this is the place to come to, especially early in the morning as you can see here. It's very quiet and peaceful. This place is located about 600 meters inland from the very busy waterfront of Izmir. This is a view of one of the entrances right ahead of me. Now, even though this uh, park is a beautiful area of Izmir, there is something eerie about the whole area. If we go back in history, let's go back to September 9th of 1922. This area that you see here was a huge Greek neighborhood. On September 8th of 1922, the Greek army evacuated the area of Smyrna, Smyrni or Izmir. And as the Turkish army was entering the outskirts of the city, a huge fire started right here, somewhere on the northern end of the park. The fire burned for five or six days uncontrolled and it burned thousands and thousands of homes. The neighborhoods of the Greeks, of about 250,000 Greeks, burned completely and the Greeks had to go down to the waterfront and wait for rescue from the Allied ships which happened unfortunately a few days after the fire started and a lot of them died either during the fire or by uh, unfortunately dropping into the water, falling into the water and waiting for rescue from the Allied ships. So this area even though it's a very beautiful area, it's a very historic area as well and it includes a very bitter chapter of Greek modern history, unfortunately. Let's continue our walk around Izmir. Now I have left uh, the park, which is right behind me, and I'm walking towards the waterfront, and I want to show you some images of modern Izmir. You can see the uh, the buildings here as I'm walking. The waterfront is about 500 meters directly ahead of me. We're gonna see the waterfront a little later. The point I want to raise is that this whole area here is full of modern buildings. And this area, as I mentioned to you, was the Greek neighborhood which extended for about three square kilometers in total about six square kilometers were burned during the fire, completely destroyed. And it included, by the way, huge neighborhoods of Armenians as well.
one of the most absolutely beautiful places here in, in Izmir is the Izmir Bay that you see in front of me. To go from one tip of the bay to the other you will have to drive or walk for about 50 kilometers. Not only the bay is absolutely beautiful but what's really stunning is the waterfront of Izmir. I have a whole video dedicated to this wonderful and fascinating waterfront. In my opinion, the most beautiful waterfront of the world. And look for that video on my channel. So if you come to Izmir, do not pass the opportunity to walk up and down the waterfront. You're going to have to walk for at least two kilometers to enjoy it. We're now looking towards the southern end. That's the pier for the boats that cross the bay. And this view is looking towards the northern direction and that's Konak Pier. So look for the video in my channel and when you come to Izmir spend a lot of time and a lot of energy walking up and down the pier. You're gonna pass so many different places and piers and gardens and flowers and pieces of art and squares and statues and you will never forget the experience. And uh, here's a beautiful view of a part of the waterfront with a huge monument that we see here. When you come to Izmir, make sure you walk along the waterfront for at least a couple of kilometers to get an idea of the beauty of the place. And uh, you should arrive at the northern end here at this huge monument that shows you people riding horses into the sea. I'm not really sure what the meaning of that is. The book that I have says that these are Turkish soldiers chasing the infidels into the Aegean Sea. In any case, here's a beautiful marble monument with beautiful views all around. And uh, of course a visit to Izmir would be absolutely meaningless unless you visited the massive bazaar. And I mean this place is absolutely massive. It is busy, it is chaotic. You can easily get lost in this place which would be fine you're gonna have a great time doing so I'm videotaping this at the end of the day that's because it's almost impossible to videotape anything during another time so come to the bazaar or to the souks walk around enjoy the Turkish culture at its best now this is not as glamorous as the bazaar in Istanbul from an architectural perspective but you're going to enjoy it nevertheless now in case you did not find the huge bazaar area attractive here in Izmir for whatever reason maybe because of the crowds or the lack of architecture you can always visit Kislar Agasse Hani, this beautiful shopping place that you see here. Now originally this was an Ottoman inn built in the 1740s, completely rebuilt in the 1900s and it has a variety of souvenir shops beautifully 
reconstructed vaulted ceilings and a beautiful courtyard. We're going to examine this honey or shopping center in a different video. In the back of Kislar Agasse, right there in front of me, there is a tea house. You can rest and drink some tea and if you go this way and then take another left you're going to arrive at the beautiful courtyard so make sure you have this on your plans do not miss it very difficult to find make sure you have a map ask around and persist in finding it and you will be very richly rewarded for the views for the shops for the architecture one of the top attractions here in Izmir Now as you walk around the city and especially around the bazaar you're going to find many beautiful mosques. Not the huge mosques that you see in Istanbul or Ankara. Smaller ones but equally beautiful and historic. Most of them built in the 16th, 17th and 18th centuries. This is Kestane Pazari Mosque here in the main bazaar of Izmir. Very close to the uh, Roman Forum or the Agora here in Izmir and part of the main bazaar you can find the uh, fish and the produce market as well. A very graphic area of Izmir. You can see here all the fresh fish being sold in this market. And if you have a few minutes, come up here and walk through the market. It is Saturday morning, so it's kind of quiet. But it gets much, much more busy as the time and the day progresses. And uh, just east from the bazaar, we find the Roman Forum or the Agora or Agora as the Greeks would call it. Now there used to be a forum here or Agora during Greek times since the 6th century before Christ. Then this site was enhanced when Alexander the Great came here in the 4th century before Christ and then it was completely rebuilt by the Romans sometime in the 2nd century after Christ. It's a large site, but unfortunately there's not much to see with the exception of the row of columns that you see there from the Roman times. Just a bunch of rubble lying all around the place. As uh, you walk along the waterfront towards the northern direction, you're going to reach the Ataturk Museum that you see here. It's a beautiful mansion with spectacular white marble in the front as you can see here. This museum is open from 8.30 to 5.30 and this is the house where the president of Turkey, Mustafa Kemal Ataturk, would stay at when he visited Izmir. So take a few minutes of your time and come here and visit this very informative and very interesting museum. It will be time very well spent and invested. Now if you really want to get an idea of the architecture of the buildings here in the beginning of the 20th century in Izmir. We have to come all the way up to the northern end 
and walk along the souks, the Sokak or the Sokatya of Izmir. So let's go for a brief walk. Imagine this is 1915 and you're walking down this narrow road. There will be coffee shops and shops everywhere. You would hear Armenian and Greek and Turkish. And the buildings would be two-story buildings with this very typical Ottoman style balconies that you see there. Let's walk along this narrow street here and you will see more examples coming up. Right there, you see one right there. So most of the buildings were two-story buildings with a balcony. Here's a couple that you see here and more coming up. Now you get the idea. The fire didn't reach all the way up here. That's because the wind was blowing and the fire spread towards the southern direction. But this place here was part of the Greek neighborhood as well. This will give us an idea also of what Izmir looks like nowadays. Well, I am uh, back at the fish market and here on the left there is a very small narrow street. A very historic street indeed. Very rarely mentioned, seen or visited. This is Havra Sogaki. This is the street of the Jews or the street of the synagogues as the Turks call it. This is the Jewish neighborhood that once was thriving with ten, tens of thousands of Jews now completely abandoned. And here as we walk around we will try to disregard the garbage and the rubbish. Here's an abandoned and destroyed synagogue. synagogue. Hevra Synagogu, it tells us there. That means that's a Jewish synagogue. You can see it's destroyed, the roof has collapsed. But at one time it was a very big building. Right there. Now let's walk around. Let's continue our walk. And if we walk around the streets here, we're going to find two more synagogues. Come on. I just took a left from uh, where I was just a few seconds ago and here there's a sign for Al Ghazi Synagogue. This is the entrance here to another synagogue. It seems to me this is the only one that actually... No, no, I'm making a mistake. This is another synagogue that is completely destroyed. There's another one around the corner. Right here, there is a sign, La Signora Synagogue, and this blue door that you see in front of me. I think this is the only synagogue that is still operating. The last two that you saw are completely destroyed. The roofs have collapsed and have been abandoned. And if I turn around, now I'm entering the main bazaar once again from a different entrance. Wow, what do you think? It's a beautiful city, isn't it? It's a fascinating city and a very historic city. I'm back at the clock tower. You, you can see it right behind me. And this is where we started our tour. Well, it seems to me like 10 minutes ago, but it was an incredible four days ago. If you liked what you saw, please do not forget to subscribe. This is Vic all the way from Izmir, Smyrna or Smyrni here in Turkey. Bye-bye.